the, the sports center at Cedar Point is, it's, I, wow. One word, one word, <laughs> one word. Why would you describe uh, 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 Amazing, amazing. Uh, state of the art. I, yeah, I, there's a lot of one word things that you could throw around for what, what they did, what Cedar Point did there, Jared, but oh my goodness, that facility. And then, hey, hey, guess who put all the iron up? Guess who put all those rafters up? Donnie Durr. Tate right? Miller. Oh, Donnie Durr was there too. Wow. Tate Miller. Tate was put. Yes, was, Don, Tate, Tate, Tate was Don working with Donnie Durr. He's a laborer. Yeah. Tate's yeah. A, yeah. yeah. And Tate, Tate's a, uh, uh, Donnie Durr is a laborer. Tate is a, a crane operator. So wow. Tate literally set the massive trusses, those spans mm -hmm. for the roof. Tate did that. Wow. So I didn't know that. That was crazy. And, and yeah, no, I got to take a video this week when I get back there because Tate, he then he sent me a picture of the Gertzweiler crane because Gertzweiler is our company they work for. And it was like, he's like, oh, no, look, this is me setting the, the trusses. I was like, wow, that's amazing. It just blows my mind. But uh, go on there this weekend, man. First off, you guys ran a great event. Uh, the social distancing, the temperature checks at the door, the, uh, the how the staff worked. Uh, Wes and his staff did a great job. I was just so impressed with it and how – he, you know, he, Wes made a great point. He, he said, you know, I think 10% is what they're trying to do, right? 10% capacity. Oh yeah. That means with, place with is a massive. place like that. You, right. No, no, that's my yeah. thing. Yeah. And they only want to have like 10 or 12 or 15%, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and he's like, you know, a place like this is going to look pretty empty when you're only operating at 10% of capacity. Right. And I was right. like, that's a good point. I, whatever the percentage was, it's, it's under 20%. It's a very low right. percentage. And you guys did a really good job of uh, keeping people spaced out and spread out. And the social distancing was practiced. So I thought it was, that was really cool about it. Um, it's much easier to do that in that facility than it is to do even most arenas. Mm -hmm. And then obviously a high school gym is even harder to do. So for example, this weekend, Oak Harbor competes at Archbold in a, a really good dual tournament and uh it's Elyria, Graham, wow. nice. Oak Harbor, Archbold, at Seago, somebody else I forget. But we go, um, we go there next week. Obviously not those teams, so. <laughs> yeah, not no that fans though. Right, right. Right. No did you, yeah, you probably have no fan. Yeah, no fans. So mm -hmm. uh I I think that what you guys are doing, they can do that easily and justify it at a high school. No fans, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, but I, where you guys were, right? Holy smokes, dude. Taj Mahal, the spare gym where you're doing awards. That was incredible. I was just so impressed, Jared, with the whole facility, the staff, your staff is professional as always. So what you guys did that first open event for OEC of 2020 was uh was pretty good. And then I saw the next one coming up January yeah. 10th, I believe. Yeah, invite we, only. I'm excited for that. Yeah, we're working ninth and tenth, looking at it. Um, I know people are wanting junior high events, but right now there's junior high wrestling going on at the middle, you know, middle schools right now wrestling. So it's kind of hard to uh, put stuff, you know, like you said, there's limited space. So yeah, you know, working on a January ninth and tenth event. Really good feedback so far. Um, so we'll see how that works, man. It's it's crazy, like you said, these schools. Um, you know, how, how it's, you know, changing every minute, you know, for the high school level. So we'll see, but yeah, January 9th and 10th, uh, you know, we'll, uh, as we get information, we're putting out there, people are wanting it, but we'll get it as we, as we have it. So it should, it should be a really good event January 10th. And we're looking at more of a, a beginner, not necessarily novice, but, um, something on the ninth. So hopefully we can make that go to, um, it'll be on the same courts where guys. Gonna okay. Be so you added another date, you added yeah. another date in conjunction with the, the invite only, you right. saw opportunity for to provide kids with another way to wrestle January 9th. But once again, fluid situation, things changing by the hour with COVID and, uh, you know, safety protocols and where we're at as a state in the state of Ohio, which there's 88 county boards of health. And that's who you guys deal with. And they take their guidance from the state of Ohio. Correct. Right. 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 Yep. Okay. So um, you guys had seven mats down. You went back down to six, I believe, for the last session. Mm -hmm. But seven mats, you probably could have gone with, if if, if it were a pre-COVID type situation, Jared, you probably could have gone with 14 mats down. The space was there for 14 mm -hmm. mats. Yeah, especially you with the You just overhead. wanted all floors. Right. Right. Yeah, with the exactly. You could put everybody up up top, and you could, you could have still like a, a four-foot walkway. Or I don't even, know. I think yeah. you'd still and have the hallway. Logistic. And the hallway, right? right? Yeah. 
So it's wild what you guys in the outskirts are accessible. Two sides outskirts are accessible from those sides through the walls. There's entrances in multiple locations. Right. So yeah, yeah. like you're saying, you could utilize the, the hallway and the walkway as, as maybe a bullpen type thing, an area where kids can warm up, put everybody upstairs. It's awesome for keeping people separated. But Guy and Defense Soap are going in the same facility at Cedar Point. They're going to go with six mats. Correct. So they're going to have even more space. Right. Well, and that's they, mind blowing to me. It, and they're I, the over, overhang though, and the hallway because it's going to be on the back side. You know what I mean? So it'll be a little less, um, you know, surrounding space. But yeah, they'll have more space on the floor, which is going to be perfect for duels. Right. Everyone's going to be wrestling, so yeah. they have space. Yeah. Um. So it's it's going to be an awesome event. Actually, I was just talking to Wes. Just got a phone before we jumped on here about about guys' event and you know making sure everything's good to go. I talked actually was texting with guy, you know, this morning about officials. Um, but yeah, they're going to, it's going to be a good event. And then, um, you know, speaking, going back to that 14 mat thing, I was talking with Wes, you know, we're not getting too far ahead of ourselves, but that June date, I know we talked Sunday on it, but we're looking at the OEC Cedar point duels and uh, you know, if, you know, who knows where we're at with restrictions, but we could, you know, max that place out with, with mats. And uh, you know, that first week in June can be a really uh, a kickoff to, to summer with a, a big event, but, um, you know, day by day, we'll see. Jared, what's your vision for that? Like we already know the vision for the defense of duels and what, what guy did is he wanted to, he wanted to be selective. Mm -hmm. He wanted to bring in, he wanted to bring in compounds, young guns. He wanted to bring in Burnett train West shore. And then, you know, some other pepperings of really good teams throughout the Midwest. And, and Guy knew what he wanted to do, and he really wanted to build an, a premier event, but he wanted to make it exclusive, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these events, the National Middle School Duels is obviously very different because you got 32 teams. Mm -hmm. You know, Guy's not bringing that many teams. He's bringing 12 teams in, right? Six mm -hmm. mats, 12 teams, no downtime. You wrestle every round, right? What's your vision for, for the OEC Duels in June? Uh, you know, same format, have a youth, have a, a – middle school and a high school, you know, if, if we can make it work where everyone's wrestling every round, so there's no downtime, you know, that would allow uh, coaches and parents, right. That's what you talk to the coaches at middle school national duels, how, how much they like getting done and having their evening free. Right. Like that's makes it worth the it. trip. It's like right? the huge draw to it. Right. 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 So I, you know, I, you know, obviously a long ways away from June, but that's the plan is, okay, we're going to have, you know, girls divisions, youth, middle school, high school. I believe it falls um, two weeks after your, your traditional, um, you know, Virginia beach weekend and two weeks before your Disney, you know, some teams don't make those trips, but you know, they could have the chance to do both, but you know, that's what we'd want to do, you know, sessions where the teams are coming in, getting the matches, getting out there. Um, you know, I was talking to West, you know, parents are asking, how's the Cedar point ticket thing work? You know, if you compete at, uh, our event this past weekend, and then you compete at guys, and then you compete at, um, you know, another event, you get separate five day passes. You know, obviously, the park may have you get 15 days, you get three right, weeks of passes, right, essentially. Right. Yeah, obviously, who knows what the park schedule is going to be, right? When they opened this past year, it was okay, season pass holders only. Um, but you know, exactly, it's a five day rolling pass, so you can come in on a Sunday through Thursday, and then also that link, um, you know, when they get that link, you know, in April, Hey, you can, you know, here's your pass five day pass. It has an option for parents to buy a discounted tickets too. Cause obviously they have to come too with the kid. Right. So, um, I mean, it's just a, I mean, I, I don't know the word for it, you know, home run grand slam, win, 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 win would be the word. Right. Right. It's all around. Right. I mean, a, a perfect scenario. So with the, going back to your question on the duels, you know, we, um, we hope to put on a great event that's laid back. We know how, some of these OAC state terms can kind of be hectic and stressful for parents and it doesn't need to be, but it, it's just, it's human nature, right. To get, you know, competitive. We hope, you know, these are competitive events, but I think with having a, a June date, um, you know, kicking off summer for most of these kids getting out of school, we think it's going to be a good atmosphere and, you know, plenty of hotels in this area, you know, more than enough hotels. So, you know, plenty of restaurants, the whole, the whole package, win-win for everybody involved. So that's the plan right now. Awesome. Now I just real quick, I see that you have something in the background that I really like. I like it so much that I have it on my head. How about this dude? 
I, How about I, this? I right? saw it. I saw it and I was like, Josh, I gotta come back and get that hat. And I didn't even talk to you. And then I I like, here's what I snagged, snagged, right? Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Uh, that's my favorite hat they have. That's pretty sweet, right? It's a really cool hat. I think we gotta get yeah, Coach I mean, Shuck on, right? Get Coach Shuck on and have him. Yeah, talk. Coach Shuck, he's gonna be next. We're gonna have to get him in the in a you know, we're trying to do all the barbarian athletes before we get uh anybody else, but the barbarian stuff that the product that uh, Ferdinand wore yesterday for practice, like you said, camo's in. Mm-hmm. Four-year-old in. Ferdinand was cuckoo Rocking. for cocoa puffs over these, dude. I like. And the whole thing is like the gusseted material, mm-hmm. like the stretchy-ish material, not spandex or lycra. Giving, they're giving. Right? But what? Yeah, they're, yeah, they're giving exactly. And, Someone like me needs that way more than little Ferdinand needs it, right? I need, you need, I need, you need to, a little stretch in your and my dress guy. pants, right? My dress pants. That's uh, <laughs> this weekend. Well, uh, going back to the OEC event, some of the guys like, yeah, I only wear these whatever pants with my OEC top, you know, whatever it is. Like, man, these got a little tight since last year, right? I'm like, yeah, I got to get the stretchy go. ones. Get the stretchy. COVID will do it to you. Right. COVID right. will do it, Jared. Right. Got to have some light no, in there. Hit, hit Josh is. Panel. Yeah, that camo stuff. He said it was selling like crazy this past weekend, and in, in those hat, I love that army hat. But he says he's working on a new bar. Um, oh, this new guy, look at this. Hat. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Gator, Gator. Nice, nice. I'm Team Gator all the way, dude. So, team Gator all the way. Oh, he hooked me up with some Perrysburg gear, BA Perrysburg. He, he does, yeah, whatever, man. It's just he's awesome. guy just does a phenomenal job, man, and, and uh, accessible to customize things. I like that. I like all of that. Or, right. or if you're Scotty Burnett, hey, just make it look good. I'm sure that's probably what he said. That's what I say. That's what I say. Uh, I, I don't know what looks just make it look good. Those OEC pullovers, I said, do what you do. And he, that's what he came up with. And I, everyone loves them, right? So so who, who are you looking to interview this weekend? Who who, who you want to get on the – are you going to do more uh, matches? For though? defense? Yeah, yeah. Mm, this, more, this weekend's – well, I'm filming all the matches, but it's unmanned cameras. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to set up cameras and just have them shoot the matches. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it's right. cause it's six man. I, I am one you man. can't be it. Right. I'll but is there the any finals and yeah. Any interviews that uh, you want to get? Just watch Bo, Bo Bassett. I didn't get to talk to Bo Bassett at national middle school duels. I believe they're here, but like you talked to him last year at middle school. Dude, talking right? to. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. When you get to talk to Bo Bassett, first off, super nice kid. Second off. Once again, I've mentioned him multiple times on the show, and our show is very young. Bo Bassett's the next Spencer Lee, Hunter, or Logan Steber, and it's mm-hmm. not really in question. Like, I'm not making a revelation or bold prediction or stepping out on a limb or what have you. Like, mm-hmm. he is just a killer, man. He's a killer, like, to watch and, and the nicest kid, right? Like, what you want. You want that awesome, that balance, that this guy will rip your limbs off. But then he helps you back up and shakes your hand and says, great match. As Logan and Spencer I, were, right? Exactly. Right. That's the point. Like, mm-hmm. yes. Yes. And I see that. And and listen, I know that's putting a lot on a kid. and But I'm one guy. You know what I mean? I'm one guy and I can evaluate that this guy, he's special. Right? You can evaluate that. I think talking to him, you know, he's always really just and the dad is really cool. Uh He's really cool to talk to. I got to talk to Keegan. Keegan's the younger brother. I haven't talked to Keegan yet. So, you know, the, talking to the Bassets is anytime you can uh, talk to people like that, that's, I, yeah, those are the things you live for. And then you can see them grow and develop. And you just, you know, whether the guy is a one time All American and, you know, maybe gets a degree and still, you know, is productive and gets back to wrestling, ultimately, that's what matters to me. Mm-hmm. It's not, you know, look what Logan Steeper's doing. You just had him on your uh, wrestling philosophy. All right. He's got a club. He's influencing young kids. He's a good guy. He cares about the sport. He wants to grow it. He wants to grow it at all levels. And he's a world champion. He's won everything you can win. I, that's what I like to see. Mm-hmm. I like that, you know, sure, he's won everything, but he's also a really good guy. He's, he's a really good guy. He's a fun guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and a point he- right over you, you know, there's some dusky people. Right. He said, you know, one thing he didn't realize growing up, you know, he just was blessed with great coaches. You know, how many of us, I mean, most of us are blessed with great coaches, but at every level, you know, starting out at a young age, you know, it's, he was surrounded by great people and they, you know, that rubs off on people. Right. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, like you're saying, like most people, you know, George Bergman, you know, your, your uncle uh, Jude, you know, you, there's just two examples right there. Like, you know, they, they walk the walk and they, they can talk the talk and they, they say, you know, your uncle was St. Mary's first state champion. Second. Right? Second. Second state yeah. champion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's crazy. St. Mary's was not good at wrestling when he was there. No. They weren't great. They weren't like the teams you were on or yeah. Drew was on or Troy or Corey was on. Right. You know, and it's like, you know, it's a guy who did it's, it first. He's a pioneer of your school. That's a pretty cool a, thing. George Bergman, you know, the Bergman it's, family. It's just like. It's a sacrifice. It's great that, to have people like that around. Like you said, you know. You know, yes. Jude and George, you know, how many hours did they sacrifice, you know, from their own family to put time in, into these kids that, you know, but now it's, they're impacting so many people's lives, right? Yeah. Yeah. And like George now, dude, George puts in as much time now as he did 25 years ago, 30 years ago. It's, dude, I watched my brother Chad's state championship from 1989. It goes over in the corner. The first guy to pick him up and jump on him is George Bergman. Right. His knee buckled. George Bergman's <laughs> knee buckled. Since it's been replaced, right? Puts Chad down his knee. Yes. And I'm like, it's crazy. We need to get him on here. Yeah. We need to get him on here. George. That'd be a good one. George, that'll make him better than George. He's dry though. George is pretty funny. He, he's a he's a best I, in he's scene. Dry funny though. In scene meetings, oh, yeah. he is great. He is great. Yeah, you've told me. He's like oh. kind of just, what's the criteria? Well, that guy should be seated ahead of him then. Oh, he's just, yeah, like the that, funny right? com- oh, he's just the, the funny comments. You know, it's just very dry, but everyone's just waiting for him to, yes. to make a comment. Yeah. So, yeah. He'd be I, a good I get one. It. He'd um, be great. He'd be great to have yeah, him. Yeah. Well, we well, can get him. We can get him. I'm in. I'll sign him up. Uh, all right. We're, we're going to, uh, Right. I got wood to go split. I got trees to drag, man. Split it up, my brother. Split it up. All oh, right. did I tell you about the new Ryobi chainsaw? No, no. Dude, I got a 40 volt, 14 inch Ryobi chainsaw, not a pole saw. A f- chainsaw. It's a Battery 40 operating. volt chainsaw. This is rips some through it. Dude. Huh? It literally sounds like a jet taking off. That's awesome. It is like, I'm like, I can't believe how powerful it is. I cut a tree down. I cut a 20 inch tree down with it. 24 inch wow. tree down with it. Like nothing. You don't have to worry about mixing gas and oil and all that. No. Crap, right? well, well, if you want to run a tree service with it, you need a 55 <laughs> gallon barrel of batteries. <laughs> right. No, it's but real, right. It's, it's real, right. Yeah. Yes. You're getting fancy Miller. It's not for getting fancy. Yeah, it's for, a, it's not it's not for professionals. Right. It's for homeowners. Home, right. Residential. Like you'd right. thr- you yeah, if you ever needed anything, you it would do everything you ever needed to do, Jared. Right. Right. And, I, and then I, some. So. And then some. That's awesome. Yes. So you have anything else? Oh, anything? you got it. I'll, I'll I'll shoot you a video of it. You okay. can overlay it if you want to. The so I am Team Ryobi. Uh oh. They gotta start paying me. Hey, I gotta. We gotta get you and Corey talking. He's Team Dewalt. Corey, uh, as Mister, it, it's funny. Well, my DeWalt's brother Corey. a better product. Right. No, but it's funny because Dewalt's we, a better product. We bust his chops though, because he's you know someone's over. It's you know most that's his collection. He's like, yeah, here's my. You know, he had it in the back of the camper, I think, when we came up to visit Troy. You know, his, his yeah. Dewalt gear and so. But your point is Ryobi, man. They they need. A, you recognize what you, what it's you great got entry on. level stuff. It's yeah. great entry level stuff. Yeah, I have a Ryobi it's great homeowner saw. stuff. I have a, a Ryobi table saw. Yeah, Works yeah. Great. And Milwaukee owns Ryobi. Right. And I got a yeah. No, I like Milwaukee. That's what I got. That's Milwaukee's good yeah. stuff. They, they support, support wrestling. wrestling. Right. Right. That's why I buy it. Yeah. Them. David right. Taylor truck. David yeah. Taylor and Dake used to drive Milwaukee trucks around. Right. Right. What's the connection there? The you Milwaukee know? gas card. What's uh? What was the connection? Is it, Ga- is it Galli? I think it's Galli. His kid was a NCAA qualifier for Stanford, if I'm right. Mm-hmm. I think it's Galli. Okay. Peter Galli is the kid, and the dad. Peter was like a 74, 84 for Stanford. Okay. Made the NCAA like two years ago, 
I think it's his dad. I'll check though. I'll get that information, but I think that's the connection. He's the Milwaukee guy. Gotcha. So cool. pretty cool. Yeah. Speaking of so, what all right. do, we got to talk, we got to figure out how we're going to give some of the stickers away and we've got some coasters. We got, oh yeah. Like I told you, we got to figure it out. Yeah. You got some BA one coming too, right? You got, yeah. I have, the, I have uh, this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So cool, man. So we'll get it. We'll get them out there. We'll do start doing giveaways right. and start having people. Yeah. I got plenty of these Ohio bad boys to go around sticker mule. They should start paying us too. <laughs> All right. All right, my man. Good talk.